everyone and welcome back. Uh, apparently a square back is a little more popular than I thought. The previous video that I put up here on YouTube, uh, everybody seemed to think that was a pretty good save. So I'm probably gonna jumping on that. Maybe, maybe in a couple weeks we'll do a will it run video. But my main goal this summer is going to be pickle the bus. That's uh, my 19... 58 press bumper panel bus. There's a playlist on the channel if you want to go check that one out. But today we're going to be working on uh, installing a fire slayer in this guy. Fire safety, right? Why do we care about fire safety? Yeah. So I thought I'd take this opportunity, since I was going to be doing this, to kind of share with you all a cautionary tale. So a couple weeks ago, I was headed, and yes, I have not had time to deal with this yet, but was headed into uh, work. I volunteer a couple hours at this little local art store where I have some of my art. And I uh, started the bus, backed it out. So you can see we're parked in a carport here. Backed it straight out. And bus is running. And the birds had had their way with the other side of the bus. I'll show a picture of that. So I walked the short distance up to the hose, which is right back there, and back down to the bus. And it had died in that time. This truck doesn't have a, a choke, but on a warm day, it starts fine. So I thought, well, it's just died because it wasn't warmed up enough. So I hop in it uh, to restart it, and I just happen to glance in my side mirror, and I see smoke billowing out right here. Well, that shouldn't be happening, so I don't even come back here to look. I jump out, I come and grab the fire extinguisher we have right here run around and I'm on the deck lid with one hand and got the fire extinguisher ready to pull the trigger with the other, not knowing what I'm going to see. <laughs> and this is what happened in a pretty good fire. Uh, when I opened the lid, it actually looks worse in person than it does on film. When I opened the lid, the flames looked up and my big concern was they're going to melt my canvas top. But they didn't, so I think we're we're okay. And there is a fire extinguisher, an automatic suppression system that I keep in this bus. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. And we're going to install one on Ruby. It melted a couple of uh, plug wires. I don't know if you can see back in there. Got one there. It melted some wiring back up in. Uh, I still do not know what happened. I haven't investigated it yet. I just have not had time, believe it or not. So I'm open to guesses. Shoot me a guess down in the comments. See what you think. We will inspect. I'll cut this... Uh, this one is a blaze cut. We're going to be installing Fire Slayer, but uh, this was one of the original blaze cuts that were available uh, several years ago. So we're going to cut it out. I'll make sure it is still good before we reinstall it. But I was, I saw the smoke and was actually quicker than the blaze cut, believe it or not. I jumped over, grabbed the fire extinguisher, and I don't think we've damaged uh, the automatic suppression system. Let's hope. Here's to hoping. <laughs> So I don't think we did too much damage cost-wise. Uh, yeah, we'll get on that as soon as we can. It got hot enough, it melted. There's some tar up here in the back of my bed. And this one was bubbling. A little bit of tar in there. It was just kind of bubbling up. So it was getting pretty warm in that interval. So we are going to be installing a Fire Slayer in Ruby. Now Ruby had a Fire Slayer originally. And what you can actually probably still see the witness marks. Yep, you can still see where it was. So it was wound around right here. And what happened was the zip ties actually, you know, zip ties and plastics, they get kind of brittle and rotted after a short period of time, especially when they're exposed. There's a remnant right there. Especially when they are exposed to the heat of the engine constantly when it's being driven. And what happened was one of those broke just as we pulled in the driveway and it dropped the fire slayer down, got it into the belt and cut a hole in it so it wasn't good anymore so we bought a new one and I hadn't installed it yet <laughs> and then I had a fire and I'm like okay before Ruby gets driven this is going in so I've just opened the box and here's what's inside you get uh, the tube which is the actual fire extinguisher component there's an end where they fill it and then there's an end with a gauge you get some zip ties and some little uh, wire keepers to hold it back if you need to, and uh, more zip ties, take those out. So I just get ready to put this in there and 
up here. Remember I was talking about the birds having their way with my double cab. They built a nest up in my sidecar. <sighs> really? I hope you guys are enjoying your stay. <sighs> and yes, we have another Higgins trailer. I'm going to build a canvas for this one. Uh, some friends of ours, and they can't get a canvas built. Apparently Bear Creek Canvases, who are the main tent canvas makers, are backed way up. So I agreed to tackle another one. The good thing is it's identical to the one that I just did. So should be able to handle it just fine. Problem is though, we're having trouble getting some stuff from the supply chain. Can't get zippers and stuff like that. Oh, kind of stinks. Uh, in this install, I'm gonna use one of their provided little clamps and I'm gonna put it about where I was talking where this could hit and cause a hole. So we're gonna try that. I've taken one of the nine millimeter nuts off of the license plate. Uh, light cover and yeah, we're gonna try that smash that together a little bit more these are a six foot length so these also work for the bus and again this is fire slayer I'll put a link in the description of the video get it on Amazon I think they're 175 bucks something like that so yeah, when we burnt through that one, we were like, oh man. And when I when I say burnt through it, I mean just burnt a hole from the rubbing of the, <laughs> the belt against it. And I want to be able to read the gauge, so I'm going to try and turn this to where it's legible. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work, that little clip. That'll work just fine. So I'll go ahead and run a couple zip ties through right here on the little body molded sections of the deck lid. And these use their zip ties because they are quite a bit softer and thinner. So when it comes time for that, if a fire, if, God forbid, I hope you never have to use one, but when it comes the time where it has to be used, Hopefully the zip ties just melt and it drops down and puts out the fire. So there's two little spots you can just kind of run it through right there. I'm going to run it through both of those and then we'll just kind of thumb tighten that. Make sure it shuts and we'll finish it out. Told you, easy peasy. Gonna make sure we don't hit anything here. This deck lid hangs up at the bottom, so pardon the bang. Yeah, seems like it fits fine. Nothing is binding up when it goes to close. I'm gonna put the camera in there and I'm gonna shut the deck lid. We're gonna make sure we're not anywhere close to hitting the belt, but I don't think we are. And then uh, we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. Let's do one more fit check, make sure we are good to go. After you've cooked one of them at 175 bucks a pop for being stupid, maybe don't cook another one. So I think that's good. I think that's gonna work fine. We got I, probably about an inch of clearance between the outer lip of the pulley and uh, the fire slayer. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the second clamp on the other side of the license plate bolt that comes through on the other side. And we should be in pretty good shape. I'll zip tie a couple more around it. But the, the premise behind how these work is you have the deck lid shut. So you have essentially a closed system that's not getting oxygen, it's at least not getting a constant easy flow of oxygen. And so it's a contained system with the deck lid down if you would happen to have an engine fire. Fire breaks out, heats up, heats up to the point where this is melted, releasing the fire extinguisher container uh, components. So that's kind of how they work. They are also good to use in RVs and travel trailers. We've got a big travel trailer back there. Uh, known to have fires behind the refrigerators and microwaves. So 
really easy install. Bundle it up, zip tie it behind your refrigerator or your microwave and your RV or your travel trailer. And if a fire should break out, it's going to put it out. So if you're pulling down the road, a fire breaks out, this thing's going to hopefully put it out. That's the idea behind it. But I will say, I was faster <laughs> by paying attention. I was faster than mine. Now mine is the blaze cut. So hopefully we never have to use a fire slayer. Fingers crossed, right? So that one's in. The zip ties up here are kind of on that sharp edge. So I may cut those loose and kind of put something in between those so those don't break right there just from wear and tear. But the cool thing is if it drops now, if the deck lid is shut, this is just going to fall and hit up here. This is not going to fall at all and is going to keep it in place. So we should be good to go even if those do break. I don't like the way that those are kind of pulled tight around the metal. So I was going to tighten them up just a little bit more, but I think I'm just going to leave them because I don't want them to break. I don't want to weaken them any more than they already are. Well, this one is A-OK, -okay, good to go. Uh, we'll add to the list of checks bef before we take off in them every time. We always check the oil, check the belt, and kind of look for leaks when we start it. We're going to add check the zip ties to make sure they aren't getting brittle. But in theory, hopefully if this one does break a zip tie or two, the whole thing won't drop down into the belt now because I've got those two metal brackets there. So even if these two zip ties break, it's going to fall, hit the breather, and hopefully not fall into the belt or the pulleys. In theory, right? <laughs> this guy, on the other hand, we're going to dig into this and find out what's wrong. Don't forget to leave your uh, comment of your theory for what went wrong <laughs> down below. I will give you two clues. One, the throttle or the accelerator pedal is dead. So it just is at the floor. And back here, it acts a little weird. That was clue one. Clue two, the engine never revved or changed its tone. It just died. That's clue number two. We'll see where that gets us. So I'm gonna jump to the footage now of installing one of these in my brother's bus. He also got the Fire Slayer. And just wanted to show you what one looked like installed into a beetle. Yay! One more use I failed to mention. I am a sailor also, so I have a boat too. Too many toys, not enough time. These are also great for boats. So we've got boats, RVs, cars, trucks, your shop, anywhere that you uh, maybe can't be watching 100% of the time, like in a car where the engine's in the rear. Uh, you can have that peace of mind having a fire extinguisher at the ready without you even being there. All right, now to the footage of my brother's bus. Hey everybody, how's it going? I can be working on my brother's bus today. Can you believe you let me get my grubby paws on this thing? We'll do another video of it a little bit later, but I'll do a quick walk around for you. As you can see, there's not much work to do on it, but we are going to install a fire suppression system. And we are going to be installing the Fire Slayer version of this. It's essentially just a, uh, like a fire extinguisher chemical ingredient in it that will release when it gets to a certain temperature. There we go, that's a little easier. So inside this bag is a tube that's zip tied together. We're going to cut those apart so that we can make essentially a big U and we're going to just install it right in here up above the engine. Uh, it comes with instructions on how to install, but honestly, it's so easy. Uh, Dalton could do it. Seven year old can do it. Super sim simple to install. So I'm going to show you just how easy it is. And all we're going to need for this bus is zip ties. We're not even going to use the uh, tie offs. So let's jump down here in the engine bay and get this thing installed. So up in a bus, you have these little slits up here in the floor that you can actually slide a zip tie into. So we're just going to tuck it behind, come around, make a U, and cover this whole space. So it'll be one leg of the fire slayer in the front of the engine, and one leg will go behind uh, the housing there, fan, fan shroud. 
So that's how I'm going to install it. That's how I have it installed on my double cab. And uh, we hope we never have to use it, but it's a pretty good insurance. So we've just cut it apart so that we can make it into a giant U, essentially, instead of a circle. We might need one on each turn also. All right. Okay, so I had to kind of move you out of the way to actually almost get climb into this thing in the engine bay, get those last few kind of in place. Everything's loose except for this one here. Um, so we should be able to move everything to get it aligned correctly. I kind of want these to end right where that stops, that uh, piece on the floor starts. So we're going to just try to end both caps right there if we can. They don't have to connect. Nothing has to connect. You just got to make a big U there. And you can put this anywhere you want. I mean, it can go on the deck lid. It can go. There is a spot up here on buses. You can actually make your U come closer to the front. But my theory is you've got a 10 gallon bomb sitting right back there in the form of a gas tank. So if we can suppress it before it gets back there, that's kind of my theory why I put them in this way. So let me go ahead and tighten everything up. We'll get it adjusted and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. So there it is all buttoned up. I gotta go back in and put this hose back in. I left it out and it's already drawn first blood. <laughs> Those zip ties are kind of sharp. But yeah, it looks looks pretty good. If a six foot, this is a six foot piece, fits perfectly in a bus and like I said just leave a zip tie get a couple of them tight so you can hold it up there and then keep them loose all the way around because you have to do a little bit of adjustment I think I'm going to go ahead and put one around right over there just so that doesn't want to drop down but I think we are all good to go put this back in and that part is done thanks for hanging with me on this one everybody I truly appreciate it this is not a paid promotion I'm not getting a kickback or anything I just feel like it's our responsibility as a community we find a product we believe in to share it with the rest of the community, especially if it comes to saving one of these pieces of precious metal. I truly appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time. I'm going to work here now, so I have to talk about it. I can only tell about it's, pay, it's payback. Yeah. Well, it is called Phantom, so it's haunting you still. Yeah. No, I don't wear it. I love the faces. Mm -hmm. And these did light up. I don't know if they light up anymore now or not. I, I noticed there's a couple indicators up here. Uh -huh. Little turn signal indicators. Yep. Strangest Volkswagen I've ever seen. Yeah, really. It's <laughs> transformed Volkswagen.